Hello everyone, welcome to PC Academy. As you can see, I've had my haircut and my beard trimmed, so I think I'm looking quite dapper, but I'll let you make that decision. I'm gonna be putting together a custom gaming build for display in the shop. I'm going to be using a CIT case in this build. It's a brand that I've used uh, before, but not this particular model. It does look nice. Um, and it looks a quality case, so the, the, the full build at the end should look really nice. Some of the components that I'm using are ones that I use quite a lot. Um, however, I have changed the liquid cooling in this from a Corsair to this particular brand. It's not one that I've used before, however, the price difference is quite significant. The Corsairs can be anything up to or above £100, whereas this particular brand is a lot less and as we strive to build different custom gaming PCs at different prices, um, it's always nice to try uh, different uh, brands when you're building a system for display. Some of our previous custom gaming builds have been around the £600 bracket. Uh, we've also built up to at least £2,500, £3,000. Unfortunately, I wasn't doing videos then, uh, as it would have been nice to see one of those. Uh, however, the videos that we're doing and have done with the custom desktops, they've been ranging anything from £800 to 1000 So it gives you a guide figure on the kind of money involved at that level. So we're going to make a start now on the custom build for the shop display. Here are the components that I'm going to be using. So let's crack on and get this built. So this custom gaming build is going to be built into a CIT Raider case, which I shall show you in a minute. The parts that we're going to use to build this one is an Intel i5, 16 gig of RAM and a one terabyte NVMe hard drive. Using the same gigabyte motherboard as we used in a previous build, along with the gigabyte PSU and a GTX 1650 graphics card. We're going to have a go with a completely different liquid cooling setup on this one. Uh, one that I haven't done before, so that'll be interesting. And uh, we'll see how we get on. So we'll move on to the build. So we're going to be using the CIT Raider case for this build. Nice uh, side glass panel, three front fans. So I think this will be really nice once it's finished. So as in the previous video of the other gaming build, it's um, basically a repeat of fitting CPU onto the board along with the hard drive. So we'll get on with that now. Again, we're not going to need the cooler because we're going to be fitting uh, some liquid cooling. So we'll put that to one side and fit the uh, i5 CPU. So these processors will only go in one way. As you can see, they have a cutout in them. So that must line up with the cutout slots on the motherboard CPU. So just drop into place and then secure the retaining bracket. So that's the CPU now installed. We can now move on to the hard drive. So I'll lift up the plastic Retainer. And there we have it, that's the hard drive in place. So we'll now move on to fitting the liquid cooling brackets 
uh, see how we fare with that as it's a new model uh, so it'll be quite new for me to to see how that goes so this is an Auraflow Series X liquid cooler um, you've got your rear fan all your brackets some screws more brackets And then the usual radiator uh, and pump section. If you've fitted quite a few liquid cooling kits, you will have a basic idea of which parts are likely to be used. I would assume at this stage, I haven't looked, that these will be the risers for an Intel CPU with the locking nuts. Um, those bag of screws are obviously going to be for the radiator and fan assembly. It's just a case of which brackets um, are correct for the Intel, which I'm assuming is going to be this one that looks very much like an AMD. However, we shall move slowly and make sure we get it right as we go along. So we're going to go with this bracket. I mean, the cutouts are the same shape um, as the rear there. So I think we're pretty much guaranteed this is going to be the right bracket. It's just a case of securing it down. So we'll move on to that now. There are no actual instructions with this setup. So if you're going to be unsure, and I will do anyway, I will clarify it before I clamp anything down fully. I'm sure there will be a manual or a video from the company online to the correct way of fitting, especially with these brackets that we know go around the pump. However, there are two brackets there, so I will watch a video or get some guidance online before we clamp everything down. Okay, so at this moment in time, there isn't a lot to go on online, not especially for this model, the double radiator version. There seems to be um, something that you can look up, but this particular model doesn't seem to be that easy to find. However, I have spent a little bit of time looking at it. I've now got the Intel plate, um, which you rotate onto the pump. So that's now in place. We know the bracket is definitely correct because of the shape. However, were these on other coolers are normally the Intel risers, it would appear on this model, we're going to use um, these ones with the spring load um, to clamp down because the thread on these, especially this end, doesn't actually fit anything. So I can only assume that that thread is for a completely different socket of motherboard. So we shall carry on now and get this motherboard fitted into the case. wiring that's going to be installing for the audio the usbs and these are all the cables for the front rgb fans so for now let's get the cabling through and then we can move on to the power supply so we're going to be using a gigabyte 550 watt in this build uh, which is more than good enough as a power supply there are other variants you can use there's semi-modular modular um, higher wattage ones, it's really down to personal choice and what type of graphics card you're fitting as to what sort of power you're going to require. For this level of build, this power supply is more than good enough. Uh, it's a good brand name, 
and um, I've used them before so I can't foresee any issues. So we'll go ahead now and get this fitted. Okay, so we've got the wiring going to the motherboard for the USB audio and front connectors. We'll connect the um, USB 3 later. We've got the power supply connected to the board there so that we can now go ahead and get the liquid cooling installed. Okay, so we've mounted the radiator fan with the wiring at the top so that it can go through the top of the case when it's fitted. So we just need to get this bolted in or screwed down okay, so we now need to get the radiator screwed into place We won't tighten this up just yet. This allows us a bit of movement. Okay, so that's the pump now screwed down. Uh, we'll get the cable sorted out and get the ram fitted. So we're now at that stage where the RAM memory is fitted, the liquid cooling is fitted, graphics cards in, all the wiring is in, nothing super tight or tied in place yet. Um, but it's now a case of doing a preliminary boot to see if it boots to BIOS before we start getting all the RGBs and everything sorted out. So let's move to a test boot. Okay, so I've now hooked up uh, the RGB 
controller for the front fans and the, the wiring and everything will get tidied later but that's now all coupled up so we'll give the uh, the fans a test we'll get this fired up and see how the fans look So as you've seen, the PC is booting fine now. All the wiring is in and connected. Uh, nothing is secured yet or tidied up. Uh, the next stage for me is to get Windows 11 installed. Um, all the lights in the case are working fine via the controller. But uh, as you may or may have not seen, um, the lighting on the liquid cooler and fan uh, doesn't illuminate. And that's because it has an ARGB connector which unfortunately the motherboard that I use in this build doesn't have that header on the board. So I now need an ARGB controller in order to connect them fans um, to the power supply so that I've got control then over the lighting on the pump and the radiator fan. So I'm now gonna order an ARGB controller unit so that I can get those connected up uh, and get the lights working. So as if by magic, here we have the um, controller, which has just arrived. So I'm now gonna get this fitted. So there we have the custom gaming build complete for display, ready for after Christmas, if anybody's looking for a really nice gaming PC. Didn't expect the ARGB controller problem to occur, I have to be honest, uh, but sometimes when you buy a new component, you don't always know what's supposed to be in the box until you reach the point of needing it. It could be that it's fallen out of the box, or maybe uh, the company that i purchased it from had pre-sold one earlier may have had a faulty controller in it so they've took that out of this box to give to maybe another customer problem is they've then sold me this one without the controller in it um however we've got there in the end simply by buying a controller online to do the same job so it's not the end of the world but yet again these are the pitfalls sometimes you can fall into during building I do believe that it's a really nice looking gaming PC and I'm happy with the ID cooling uh, setup. It's really nice in colours and looks the part. Um, from what I can see on the temps, does the job. So until the next video, thanks for watching. Bye for now.